Hey guys, what's up? Good evening. And I thought I'd take a moment to address some of the questions you guys have regarding my latest video. So a lot of you guys were surprised that in my top 10 programming languages for 2017 that I chose to put C Sharp on top. I believe last year's video, I don't remember exactly where it was. I think I had C Sharp at like four or five. I believe it was four. Um, however, what I wanted to just talk about a few of the things as far as why um, I put C Sharp there. And it's not because I'm a Microsoft fanboy or that I do everything in C Sharp, because I really don't. If you guys know, I mean, I, I've done a lot of Django work. In fact, my newest website, Hipster Code, is all written in Django and Python. So um, I love Django and Python. I love the money that it saves me to be able to run a full stack on a Linux uh, host and, and just you know not have to worry about Azure or licensing costs and things like that that are typically associated with a company like Microsoft. Not to mention Microsoft pisses me off day in and day out. Like every day I, I usually curse Microsoft at least once. So this is coming from somebody that, that gets just as frustrated as everybody else when it comes to like their programs just not working the way that they're supposed to. For probably 10 years now the ideal solution whenever Visual Studio starts acting up is just to restart it. That's always like the highest upvoted answer on Stack Overflow. Oh, it doesn't work. It's doing some crazy shit. Just restart it. It'll be all fine again. Um, you know, that's that's unacceptable. But, you know, if you're a Microsoft Visual Studio developer over the last decade, uh, that's just par for the course. That's just what we do. So why did I put C Sharp at the top of the list? Well, it boils down to really two languages that I think deserve to be on top uh, this year as opposed to last year. Really, it's Java or C Sharp. So I know that that's like the age-old crap that we've been talking about for decades now, but the, the point is, is that there's a lot of enterprise development being done in either .NET or in the Java world. So if I were going to choose between the two, I personally prefer C Sharp much better. Now, all of this is just one man's opinion. Um, however, I, I've done some research into the matter. I've actually written a, a decent amount of Java, and I've written a ton of C Sharp, and I find C Sharp to be head and shoulders better than what Java provides. But they're both very, very similar languages. They're both they're both statically typed, or, or what you can uh, consider strongly typed. Um, they are both object-oriented languages, like completely object-oriented, not like both procedural and object-oriented like a Python language. Um, they are strictly object-oriented languages. They both have their own runtime environments, like the Java has the JVM and um, the C Sharp or .NET environment has the CLR, Common Language Runtime. Um, so they're very similar in the fact that you're supposed to be able to write um, regarding you know, the .NET language, like if you're writing in C Sharp, then it should just work wherever you have .NET installed, ideally. But none of that stuff ever works all that well. There's always some headache, especially when you start getting into packaging software. You're going to always run into some you know, situation where it's like, oh, I don't have the right version of .NET installed and on my customer's machine and it's messed up and all this stuff. But that's not just a .NET thing. That's actually something that, that happens quite frequently with a lot of different programming languages. Okay, so if I was going to use C Sharp or Java, right? I mean, the, the, the situation is that a lot of companies use those two frameworks or those two languages because of the tools that are built around them, the massive amounts of libraries, the massive amounts of corporate support when things go bad. One of the things I wanted to talk about in a separate video is that once you're big time, it becomes, your job becomes much more difficult. If you're a, uh, architect on some big team for a, a huge corporation and your systems go down, depending on how big the company is, it could be costing the company millions of dollars an hour. Sometimes it could be millions of dollars a minute, depending on you know how much work is being lost as a result of the systems going down. So that said, a lot of companies are willing to pay the premium for things like Azure and uh, AWS and and you know they'll choose something that's tried and true that so many other corporations are using like Java or C Sharp because they just feel more comfortable being able to call up Microsoft on the phone or call up Oracle or something like that and saying hey I have a problem and I pay you a bunch of money you guys need to fix this problem and um, they also rely upon 
you know, the, the, the corporations that back these projects to be there when patches need to roll out for any sort of security alert. A lot of the trends now with cybersecurity is that um, companies are trying to talk about sharing threats. In fact, I actually um, I spoke to a representative from, uh, from a company that, that handles cybersecurity for defense contracting, and they were talking about a product that they were making where they're essentially in real time trying to um, establish threats globally, but they're almost doing it through a crowd sharing process where um, proprietary monitoring just can't be done uh, in real time, not as well as, you know, like a social aspect to it. So um, that's probably another topic for another day. But the point is, is that the larger these languages are and the more corporate support that they have, the less or the more secure that they are and, and the better you can feel about using them as a company that may deal with millions and billions of dollars. So why did I pick C-Sharp? Well, C-Sharp has Visual Studio. Visual Studio is the best text editor. It's better than Eclipse. Eclipse really sucks ass compared to Visual Studio. I, granted, the complaints I had about Visual Studio earlier about having to restart it, that's one of the few complaints that you have with it. If you're going to be getting into a big development environment team, Team Foundation Server is a pretty good tool in order to deal with source, uh, source, you know, repository, uh, also being able to to dual out like tasks and things like that for an agile type of uh, development environment. And a lot of these little subtopics I can discuss in, in different videos. I don't want to make this one too long. But um, like you can see, this is a simple little program here, which is actually sniffing out browser traffic. It's all statically typed. Um, so the ability to be able to just jump around uh, into your, your source code and things like that is much easier with something like Visual Studio. If you compare this to something like Python, and you have hundreds of developers writing something that may have millions or hundreds of thousands of lines of code. Python doesn't have near the, the amount of tools and support uh, that Visual Studio and C Sharp provide for very, very complex applications. Um, also, just you know, interfaces, the, the way object oriented, uh, the way it's object oriented, um, just the entire design of the language um, is really, it's really fantastic. It really is for for larger development environments. Um, the way C Sharp, I mean, the, Anders Helsberg, I mean, the guy who designed this language, he's designed TypeScript. He also had a lot to do with like Turbo Pascal. Uh, he's he's an amazing guy. Uh, a lot of people behind this this project are uh, really amazing. I think it's C sharp as as of 6.0 is is absolutely fantastic. Um, so another thing is that if you want to get into game programming, why are you going to use C plus plus C sharp and Java both have garbage collection, um, garbage collection and memory management is not something that a lot of newbie programmers want uh, want to get involved in. It's something that is typically over their head with something like C or C plus plus and um, and with the tools available to you in C Sharp to be able to step through and be able to see stack traces and add watches. And, um, and, I gr and granted, some of these other languages do that, but um, a lot of the hacker communities in like PHP and Python, they're not using uh, the tools that are available to them in something like C Sharp um, and the .NET environment that you absolutely have to use in order to be able to truly write some of the more complex stuff. So if you're going to write a complex GUI app, the C Sharp is the best uh, option out there. I mean, if if you're looking for uh, something for like software applications, like I mean, Windows is still the number one operating system by far. C Sharp with its new .NET Core uh, is promising not just in, in ASP.NET Core, um, but with the whole .NET Core framework, um, it, it's promising to be open source that so you can actually run it on, uh, not open source, but also cross-platform. It's open source as well, but it'll run on Mac, Linux, or Windows. And, uh, and that's really going to open things up. So for the longest time, Microsoft was basically saying, screw you, open source community, we're not getting involved. And then we've seen languages like Ruby and Python, all these things spring up because people are like, well, you know, screw Microsoft. I'm not, if they're not going to open up their stuff and uh, they want to charge us a nickel and dime us for everything because they're a huge, you know, $100 billion company, uh, then, you know, they, they moved away. And then for the longest time, Microsoft realized they needed to change their ways. They get rid of their old CEO, the new CEO comes in, he starts changing a lot of things that are being done. So .NET Core is just one of the things, but them working with uh, Unity is another thing. Um, the purchase of Xamarin is something that's, that's really important as well because um, C Sharp and Microsoft wasn't competing very well on a mobile and tablet market even though the Surface Pro is relatively okay and the Windows Phone isn't like a terrible product, it, it certainly didn't, it couldn't compete with, with Android and 
uh, Apple. So they went ahead and they purchased Xamarin, which is a billion dollar platform here, in order to build mobile apps that you can build um, just using the C Sharp and uh, Visual Studio. So in, in Visual Studio 2015, they include um, you know, a lot, all these tools that you can use with Xamarin to, to write C Sharp and actually have it uh, poured over to uh, iOS so you can have, you know, hit the, uh, the app market um, or the Google Store if you wanted to go the Android route. But you can see a lot of major companies are using this product, but now it's owned by Microsoft. There's also the fact that they just purchased LinkedIn, so I'm not sure where that's going to go, but I think you know, that's never going to hurt their brand or awareness in, in 2017 now that they own you know, basically the Facebook of business uh, networking. And, uh, and obviously they have a shitload of cash, guys. I mean, the, these guys were sitting on over almost $100 billion in cash. They, they spent over $20 billion all in cash to buy out LinkedIn like it was nothing. They paid $2.5 billion for Minecraft like it was nothing. Um, if you look at the, the history of Google, when Google brought in Eric Schmidt, the, uh, he's, no, he's known as Mr. Google, the CEO that ran Google for the longest time when uh, Sergey Brin and Larry Page were just young, uh, you know, younglings and, and didn't really know how to run their company, they brought in a guy that was very experienced, had uh, experience with Apple and a couple of other companies. But the first thing he warned Google about um, as they were getting popular was to do everything they could to fly under the radar to avoid Microsoft because they were worried when they were first getting off the ground in the late 90s that Microsoft was going to swoop in and crush them before they could actually gain their market share. So Microsoft has been like the kingpin in, in, in development, I mean, along with IBM. and I mean, but they've never really gone anywhere. They lost some market support. Um, and, and, and then some of the trends, even as of late, still show that um, C Sharp may be in a lull. I mean, it certainly has been in a lull over the last two years. It, it's not it's not expanding like we've seen with Python. Um, however, when it comes to a sheer amount of jobs and the, you know the the Fortune 100s and 500s that are that are applying the Microsoft technology, it still blows away some of the smaller companies like Python and Ruby and stuff like that. So even though we're seeing tremendous growth with some of those those commun those uh, languages in the startup communities and things like that, you know, real business from some of these major corporations, I mean, they're still going with the tried and true proprietary stacks where they know that they can get, you know, dedicated resources for training for, um, for, for you know, security and monitoring and things like that. So um, I don't know. There, there's a ton of reasons why, guys, Microsoft and, and C Sharp is a uh, pretty good language to learn. And I understand that, you know, I did that video where I was talking about the fact that it was dying and uh, I didn't even say that it was dying. I just simply asked the question, is it dying? Um, I said if it wasn't dying, it felt like it was in a lull. But, I mean, really, that's probably overstated. Uh, if you look at Azure, Azure continues to grow. It's going to continue to compete with AWS. Um, I mean, it's it's really... I have no desire to run a stack on Azure, but if I was truly going to be running a major, major company, I would probably consider Azure. Uh, but I don't have anything big enough to, to worry about having to host on the cloud. Not not in my opinion, not at this point. Um, so anyway, guys, that, that's just me kind of defending the position on why I put C Sharp as the number one language. Um, definitely check out Unity Engine if you haven't. Unity is, is a pretty badass product. Like, I mean, I love uh, game. Pro in fact, I wish I had more time to do some game programming. Uh, I'm not very good at it, but... Uh, Unity is a blast. The problem with, with game programming, in my opinion, is just simply that, like, if you look at what's going on here in that video, I mean, that, that is like, that is, a, you know, 3D animation. So companies are using probably 3DS Max or Maya or something like that to create those awesome animations. And then you export them into your, into your game engine. So it's not like Unity's creating that, but Unity could certainly run scripts that, that play those, those cutscenes and things like that. But um, who, like it's looking at something like this, you're like, oh, dude, I want to do that. But like, I lack the artistic creativity to be able to come up with anything even remotely close to that. In fact, I don't understand how anybody can do that. That's that's just baffling to me. But um, you know, that's that's why we have artists in the world, and I'm definitely not an artist. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think. Um, so I appreciate you guys watching that video. I appreciate you watching this one. Everybody, take care and have a good weekend.